Uh, the best thing I can do to help any future model builder is teach them how to break down a basic double action gravity fed air gun and this is how we do it. Start with the back, you're going to twist that off, you're going to twist off that neural nub here on the needle, you're going to get that out, you're going to pull your needle out and you're gonna put your needle down, put it somewhere secure, somewhere on, uh, that's why I recommend these paper towels. Uh, disconnect the, the nozzle tip, set this bad boy down somewhere where you can't harm it. Put it, buy one of these, 20 bucks. You have to have this, this Iwata canister. You absolutely have to have it. There's no way to get around it. Um, make sure you have some paper towels with you. Make sure you have some paint thinner, and make sure you have a set of brushes, just like this. You can get this at any tattoo artist location, any hobby shop. The same brushes that are used to clean air brushes at uh, tat or the, the the tattoo guns are used to carry to clean air brushes, and so these things a bottle brush. That's the main thing. All right, now when you're cleaning your tips, I just this is why I use this apothecary type bottle dropper. You don't need a lot of paint thinner. Just enough. Something to get the, the, the paint going. Something to agitate it. And you want to get that pigment off. That's the main thing. Okay. Now remember that these are small parts. So if you have a workbench that you, you're dedicated to working on your models, that's going to help you in the long run. And you just drop a little paint in there and you'd be surprised at how quickly that dissipates the pigment. It gets right at the oil base of that paint and, and, and uh, dissipates it. And that's what you want to do is you want to clean this thing out. You want to remove any signs of pigment. Because if you want to spray a lighter color like yellow or white, you don't want any of that black showing up and darkening it up. So it's important to get all of that pigment out of the tip. Now, um, the actual gun, I leave it connected to my hose. There's a lot of people who say, well, you gotta disconnect it. I, I don't find any uh, particular advantage to disconnecting it. So if that gets in your way, then by all means, disconnect it, do away with it. I find that uh, I do just as well with it connected. And you just want to get in here and you want to get that, that cup. Now this, this is good that this happened. A lot of people get freaked out when this happens. The, the thumb, uh, the index depressor lever came out. A lot of people get freaked out. And I remember the first time it happened to me, I was scared to death. I thought I broke the gun. Key thing to remember, this thing is going to sit in that gun at about a 45 degree angle. It's going to sit like that. Maybe that's not clear. It's going to sit kind of like that in the gun. So what you're going to do is drop this back into the gun facing forward. Kind of, you have to work it in there. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little tricky. You won't get it maybe the first or second time, but you'll get it eventually. It'll go in there. And there it is. Okay, so don't be frightened. If that thing pops out on you, don't think you've broken the gun, don't think you need to call the manufacturer. And because this is an oil-based paint, and, and, and uh, paint thinner is a, a uh, petroleum-based lubricant, don't worry about getting it on the gun. As a matter of fact, it shines, I find that it shines the gun up and it, it removes all the gunk the paint thinner does. Um, but yeah, get in there. Get in there and clean that bad boy. Don't want to have a paintbrush that has remnants of last week's paint. You don't want orange and, and green drippings coming out of your, your dispenser cup. You want to make sure you get that down in there good. And one another tactic that I use is I, I like uh, Q-tips. Q-tips work really good. You can put a little paint thinner in there and uh, use your, your Q-tip to really ream out that cup. Get that cup really, really clean, okay? And once you've got all the pigment that you can see out of there, and this is good that this happened, the O-ring came off of the hair. 
there's one o-ring on this gun and it goes right over here it goes right over the nose cone and then you know you're gonna put this first piece of the nose cone on there nozzle holder I don't know what the proper nomenclature is and you're gonna put the second one on here and you, the important thing is that you get this thing lined out before you try to put your needle in there. Don't ever try to put your needle in there and then put this stuff on. You wind up uh, uh, bending your needle. And, and then, like I said, the needle is so important. Now this is a .03, yeah, .03 millimeter needle. So this is the finest needle that you can get. Uh, that I'm aware of in, in, in the airbrush industry. This is the, the one that uh, you would use to write your name, for example, uh, paint fine lines. Um, the, the, the lower your air pressure on your compressor, that's what's going to really control how thick or thin your lines are. The smaller the air compressor, uh, the, the, the setting on your air compressor, the, the thinner the lines you're going to be able to get. So now I'm reinserting the needle. I've made sure that, oh, here's some, some white paint from last paint session. We want to make sure we get that off. We don't want any remnants hanging, hanging around. Get that off. And I sometimes even use a very fine sandpaper. Uh, so oftentimes I'll wet this down and I'll just run that on there. I just want to make sure that I've got all the paint residue from last time off of that needle. Make sure that needle is pristine um, before you put it back in your gun. Okay, so now I'm going to reinsert the, the needle inside the gun and I'm going to chuck it down. Find the chuck key. I call it chuck nut or whatever. I want to make sure that this bad boy is perfectly seated get it down in there and it's so important that you get this step first you put the nozzle components together before you put the needle in because then you can you can you run a risk of uh, really bending your needle adversely and to the point where uh, it will it will overspray or splatter you can avoid all of that if you just follow that procedure okay now that you have it um, essentially free of any paint and you've um, you know, reassembled it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to re we're going to hook it back up to the power to the pressure. And a lot of times what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and um, you can see I have the quick disconnect port portion of the hose. This coupling here costs about oh five dollars. You can get that on Amazon.com. But that quick disconnect makes it very easy to uh, connect your hose or disconnect it. And, and you'll find that these things are, say, are time savers as opposed to having to screw it on every single time and, and go through all that rigmarole. So now what I'm going to do here is something that um, you probably will do only when you clean your, your nozzle is I'm going to turn up the air pressure and I'm going to turn it up considerably, probably almost to the max. And the, the point I'm trying to make here, the, the, what I want to do here is I want this air compressor to really put some oomph behind the, the gun, behind the nozzle. I want it to really push things out. And what I'm going to put in here is essentially Windex. This is regular old uh, automotive glass Windex, but it works really good at cleaning the air gun. And if you can see closely, I still have remnants of the black paint that was in there before. But now, as you can see, as I'm running that Windex through at high pressure, that black paint is dissipating. Almost to the point of non-existence. And ideally, what you want is you want all that black pigment to be gone. And of course, this is at super high pressure. This is probably at... Uh, almost close to 50, 50 uh, PSI, which is way higher than normal, than what you would run. Typically you would run only about 15 to 20 PSI. But I'm running it heavy here because I really want it to spray. I really want it to spritz out any impurities, anything that's stuck on that needle. 
and, and that Windex works really good for separating uh, the junk from the needle. And there you have it. There is a clean uh, airbrush setup. It, this is ready for the next time. And, and keep in mind, when these things set, and, and you'll put it in, like for right now, I'll set it here in the container, and I'll leave it uh, probably overnight until the next time I pick up the model. Um, you'll see that a lot of times that paint, because of that downward action of this Iwata uh, reservoir bottle, it's gonna force whatever residue paint that is now mixed with, with thinner and um, Windex, it's gonna force it down into the needle housing. And when that happens, like we saw today, when I first started, uh, there was a little bit of resistance, a little spattering, easy to rectify. Pull that bad boy apart, take that needle out, and inspect that needle. And I would tell you that 95% uh, of any air gun problem, when people bellyache about their air gun not working, uh, or they, they, they get on Amazon and say, well, I bought these cheap air, airbrushes and they just failed me after two weeks. The number one reason why they failed is because they did not clean that gun and nozzle and needle assembly thoroughly after each spray paint. And I, let, me, let me slow down and say that one more time. You have to clean this every paint change. There are no shortcuts with the airbrush. You have to clean it every time you put a new color in it or else it will fail all right i said enough my name is joel z williams welcome to props scale model aircraft building i am the prop master and I'm hopefully i was able to impart some good knowledge to you see you on the next installment